Hi guys, it's Miss Katie and Mr. Adam here. Well, you're almost finished with your study of the love chapter, and you've been learning about all the things that are part of real love. And today we're excited to share with you something else that is part of love. Perseverance. Love keeps going. Love doesn't give up. First, we want to share a funny story with you about how a long-lasting relationship almost didn't happen. On our first <laughs> date, I forgot to say, Oh, our first date, really? her sister, which is just oh, Rose. a oh, year and a half Rose. older than her. her. She was waiting for her date also. She comes out of the door. Well, I knocked on the door and she comes out. And she said, you ready? And I said, yeah, let's go. Or she said, let's go. And that's my I, family. She looked so <laughs> yeah, much like Eileen did. at that age. I I didn't know the difference. And I just, yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and we got down the steps off the I porch. The <laughs> and she said, uh, your date is waiting. Eileen's waiting. <laughs> she wasn't ready yet. And I, that's the kind of tricks they pull on us. So Five brothers, you can believe the orneriness that <laughs> we had a wonderful, wonderful home. <laughs> we had a nice courtship. <laughs> wow, I'm really glad that Mr. Ely didn't end up with the wrong sister, and that even though Mrs. Ely's family liked to play tricks on him, that he persevered, and now they're getting ready to celebrate their 64th wedding anniversary this fall. That's really awesome. You know, 1 Corinthians 13 is a popular reading at wedding ceremonies because marriage is a commitment and it needs to be full of love in order to persevere. We've only been married for 12 years, so there's a lot we're still learning about marriage. But I was able to track down some wonderful couples from Prince of Peace who, like the Ely's, were willing to share their godly wisdom on what marriage is. I think we always did talk about um, making sure that you have a similar faith. Um, our family's always been very faithful. We've gone to church together. So I think impressing upon them, you know, having that faith. And we always want you to believe in Jesus and always want you to serve. So I think that, you know, maybe, you know, kind of inferred that, that we wanted that as a, you know, choice for a life mate maybe didn't specifically say about that and I think I, I think you need to think about that early and like I said we fell in love and we had a shared faith and so it kind of worked out but it's very easy when you're young to to fall in love or think you're in love with somebody and then have to worry about the fact that oh but but we don't have a shared faith we don't have shared values you know, we, we just, she's cute and whatever, and fun to be with, and if you don't, th that shared faith is important for it to last and, and for you to, you know, I think you have lots of trouble later if you don't have that shared faith to, and shared foundation. Well, it's one nice thing I like these things. about Eileen is she was like I was and went to church every Sunday and I liked that and her family when I got to know them they also went to church some dislikes and if we had some advice for kids and teens about dating and marriage I'd say take your time get to know the person uh, get to really know your date what kind of things they like what they dislike what their faith relationship is is it is it something that that will go well and what what the family ideals are as far as how they were raised and what they they see as going forward as a relationship versus just uh on the surface of yeah it's nice to hold hands and go out on dates and go to uh, movies and and different things and do different activities but get really to know the person of, of what they do and how they do it I think the, one of the most important things you can give is your example of how you treat each other. So your kids see that. 
They see you kiss each other, hug each other, do things for each other. Uh, we prayed for our children every day. And I don't mean that, I mean that literally, you know, about finding the right, even when they're real little, Lord, when that time comes, lead them to find the right spouse. I want them to have happiness and joy. Um, we talked, I talked with Jesse uh, when she was little, sort of explained things to her about the difference between men and women, you know, boys and girls, what she should expect, what she should be careful about. Uh, same thing with uh, Solomon and Daniel, and we've talked with Lena as well about some things, you know. Um, but always, if you want to be married, find a partner who knows the Lord and believes in the same Lord Jesus that you do. That's the highest. It's awful hard if you're married to someone who doesn't know the Lord because their idea of forgiveness is so maybe totally different than your idea of forgiveness. Their idea of what happens when you die. Well, I know where I'm going. Well, if they don't have that, then that faith in eternal life through Jesus, what about the children? See, that's another thing. How you train up the children if you are, so you want to be equally yoked, yoked with someone who has the same faith and trust in Jesus and grow together then in your marriage. Example that for your children, you know, and, uh, Train them up in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. That's uh, what old Solomon said. Pray with you all say? the time, please. And I'm still praying for two that aren't married, that they would find the spouse God wants them to find. And another thing was not freaking out when they brought home the ones you knew were not the right ones. <laughs> Trying so hard not to freak out. Just trust God. He will show her <laughs> to be ready to talk when they come home and say, yeah, he wasn't the greatest. No, right. He wasn't. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> Shoot. But trying not to freak out was a hard one. But because you just love him so much and you want him to make the right decisions. But being available and willing to talk about whatever they want to talk about with each of the people they do end up dating. and um. Teaching them to pray about every decision they make. That's a big one. You know, like we pray, you know, should we do this, Lord? Is it right in your eyes? Is it your will? You know, and uh, and teaching them to pray, Lord, lead me to the... I prayed for years. I didn't want to do the dating scene. I did a little bit, you know, uh, and I said, well, this is a waste of time. Lord, just give me the one I'm supposed to marry. You know, and, and he did, you know, and uh, so I, I, I told all the kids that too, because they asked me all these questions. And so, and I know she did as well, you know, from a feminine, feminine point of view, you know. So, you got to have both sides, you know. So, yeah. So, I would uh, be in the Lord, pray to the Lord. When you date someone, date someone who knows the Lord. Don't think you're going to be able to change them prior, you know, like, oh, once we get married. I'll make them into my image. That's the worst thing you can possibly do. <laughs> because that just makes the other one angry as all get out. Don't change me, you know. And so you want to start with the right foundation. And that's Christ. Each couple that I interviewed said their marriage keeps going because they rely on God's power. Mr. and Mrs. Ely said they have seen God's hand all throughout their marriage. And they showed me 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, which says, Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. If you put your trust in God and obey His commands, then you will also be able to persevere all kinds of tough things in life. God is so loving and so powerful that He never gives up on us. Even when I sin by saying something mean or doing something terrible, I can ask God for forgiveness and He always says yes. And He helps us keep going because He loves us. 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter, and I hope through the marriages of Mr. and Mrs. Haberkost, Mr. and Mrs. Olm, Mr. and Mrs. Ely, and Mr. and Mrs. Huxel, that you see how rich and full life can be when you choose to let God's perfect love be your foundation. Love. love. Always. Always. Perseveres. Perseveres.